What is up, beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So, I just got back from like a 120 mile ride on the chopper, and uh, I'm trying to break the bike before I leave next month for my 1200 mile trip on the chopper. So, as I've said in a few videos, I am going to the Lowbrow Get Down in Garrettsville, Ohio next month. That is 598 miles from my front door to the place. Um, so round trip, 1,200 miles. I'm giving myself two days to get there and two days to get back. But because the Lord has given me more guts than brains, I'm going to try to do it in one haul. 600 miles on the chopper. I think I can do it. So I have to stop about every... 100 miles to get gas anyways, so it shouldn't be that bad. Um, I did make some changes to the chopper, just trying to um, make it a little bit more comfortable, and there are some issues that have been arising with the chopper too. One thing I have learned is that you are never done with the chopper, never done. It may be okay for the moment, but you will always be working on a chopper. You will always be changing things. It just, it never stops. So, let me show you what I've got going on with this bike. As the license plate says, this bike has been leaking. So, I've had two leaks on it. First is the primary. I've resealed this primary three times. The first time with a Harley paper gasket it leaked. Second time, second time, boop, with another Harley gasket, this time coated in RTV on both sides, it leaked again. And now for the third time, I sealed it three days ago, four days ago, with a Genuine James 30 thousandths thick gasket, and it's still leaking. Everything is torqued to spec, O-rings have been changed on drain plugs. Everything has been sealed. I don't know. It doesn't really leak that much that I'm worried about it. But I'd really prefer if it didn't leak. The other leak is kind of from the primary also. I'll show you that. So, you see all of that griminess there. That is coming from the primary vent. Right now I have the vent up here, and that may have fixed it, but before it was folded over like this and strapped right there, and it was just puking all over. These do have a, a service bulletin from Harley about a leak, and they tell you to just run it higher. So that's what I've done right there. And it appears that it didn't leak any on the way home. So couple minor issues. Uh, I know the lighting keeps changing, the sun's going down as I'm outside shooting this. Second time I've shot this video. I shot this earlier next to the Illinois River. Wasn't really happy with how it came out. So I've changed the seat on this bike for the fourth time. Four. I've spent probably more money on seats on this project than anything else. In fact, you could probably build another chopper almost for what I have in seats on this thing. But right now I have the LaPera signature seat. I am absolutely loving the seat. It's the best seat I've put on yet, and I really have no intentions of changing it. So there's the LaPera signature too. And then I don't have a back seat on it right now. Instead, I put this piece of large grip tape. So when I put my bag here, when I travel, it won't slide around. Bike's all muddy and dirty. And then, the other big change comfort-wise that I made on here is I extended the custom highway pegs that I made. So uh, there's a card above to me making these custom highway pegs, but I will show you how I extended them. I didn't shoot any video of me doing this because it was kind of um, it was kind of a test to see if it would even work and right now I'm testing them out. I don't know how long they'll hold up for, if 
they'll hold up for any amount of time. But uh, right now I've got about 120 miles on. Well, see, I rode the bike the other day too. So I've got about 160 miles with it since I've extended it, and I'll show you what I did. So originally this peg bolted in right here. What I've done is this is aluminum, this is steel, so I couldn't weld them together. Instead, I welded a nut with a threaded rod in right about here, and then I built all this up with weld, and I ground it so dimensionally it looks like it's factory. But this is all, you got about an inch right there that is not original that I added in. And then it goes to this. So all in all, you've extended the placement of the pegs out about three, three and a half inches. And this side, it wasn't really an issue, but uh, the other side, my leg would hit the air cleaner whenever I'd use the highway peg. So I extended this side, and after extending that, cosmetically it bothered me that this one wasn't extended. <laughs> so, being that I'm a little bit OCD about certain things, I had to extend the other side. Got both of those extended. It's super comfortable, it works well. It's nice to be able to throw the feet up. So, those are working. Everything else on the bike is performing well. The uh, the Poco ex I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. That's how I pronounce it. The Poco exhaust, love it. No more just blowing in my ear like those little shorty pipes. I also purchased a little Harley tool kit to put in here. I'll show you guys what I keep in my tool bag. As you see, the bike is filthy right now. This is a Saddleman tool bag. So, I've got this little Harley Davidson Cruise Tools speed kit that I got on JP Cycles for about 30 bucks. And it's really got the bare essentials you would need to work on your bike on the side of the road. It's got a couple wrenches, a little pair of pliers, spark plug socket. Really, if you need more than this on the side of the road, you probably need a tool truck, uh, tool truck, uh, probably need a tow truck. I also, though, carry a small digital multimeter. Some extra hose, I'm just gonna throw stuff on the ground now. Adjustable wrench. Leatherman, zip ties, change of spark plugs, and a funnel. With the spark plugs, like I've said before, NGK is the only way to go. Don't buy crappy spark plugs, buy decent spark plugs. So overall, I think I've got the toolkit figured out. I mean, really, if a stator goes bad on the strip or something, I'm screwed. I don't have a plug kit in there because these are tubed tires. If they were tubeless, I'd have a plug kit. But uh, I could carry patches. I mean, there's a lot of things you could carry, but uh, I don't have a patch kit in there. Uh, the multimeter I have because the battery failed once before. So if I run into any kind of electrical issue, the multimeter will be nice to have. Other than that, just basic hand tools for basic minor fixes on the side of the road, which I'm hoping I don't have to do. I'm really looking forward to uh, possibly meeting some of you guys. I really hope some of you are planning on going to the Lowbrow Get Down. If you go to Lowbrow's Facebook page, probably their website too, or their Instagram, all the information's there for it. Uh, again, Garrettsville, Ohio. It's going to be a pretty cool uh, little weekend in the woods partying. So if any of you make it there, find me. Let's have a beer. Let's hang out. I'd love to meet a bunch of you. So 
I guess that's going to pretty much wrap this video up, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. If I can get you to do me a huge favor, comment below. Are you going to the Lobo I'll Get Down? If you're not going, why aren't you going? Also, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Go to the description box. There's links to all of our social media as well as our company website, hotheadstalls.com, where we sell everything for horses, dog leashes, dog collars, apparel. There's also a 5% off discount code there. Again, I love you all. I will see you in the next one. I'm out of here.